And that music speaks to the soul. And considering music, we find that there are obviously three types of music. Classical, jazz, and rock. You, you know, let, let's make that four types of music. I seem to have forgotten hip-hop. <laughs> no, 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 five, yes. Because we must also acknowledge church hymns as well. Yes, five. No, seven, yes. There are seven types of music, definitively, including country music and, of course, African tribal music. <laughs> oh, oh, and one more. Inuit throat singing. <laughs> <laughs> the truth of the matter is, if we consider the entire world, the number of musical styles is far too many to be contained on one board. So how do we understand these often bizarre musical styles? Consider the Inuit peoples of Canada, whose throat singing uses another person's mouth as a sounding cavity. <laughs> this practice was so strange that Europeans tried to end it. <laughs> Today, we'll broaden our perspective on what music is and what it means to culture. The primary focus of our examination will be the field of ethnomusicology, which is the scientific study of music as an aspect of culture. We will be looking at some of the key principles in this study of music. Then we will see how Christians are using cultural music to break down barriers to the gospel. And finally, we will see how this applies to our own culture. Music has always been eagerly studied by intellectuals, but up until about 50 years ago, musicologists would almost exclusively study music isolated from culture. With the advent of cultural anthropology, there was an interest in how cultures worked, and several of these musicologists began to study music from a cultural perspective. These new ethno-musicologists sought to understand the music from the perspective of those actually making the music, what it means to them. This was truly a revolution in the way music was studied, and to help us understand this, we will look at some of the key principles of ethnomusicology as outlined by expert Ron Binder. The first principle is variety. Music is almost as varied as language itself, with thousands of styles developed in cultures around the world. From the famous Tuvan throat singers of the Siberian steppes to the obscure classical piano music of Europe. <laughs> the second principle is structure. All music has structure and is guided by rules, written or unwritten. Now, this doesn't mean that these rules will make sense to an outsider. Think back to your first piano lesson, when those notes bore little relation to the black and white keys. But even seemingly chaotic music does have an underlying structure. Consider this piece of snappy, my main day clarinet music. <laughs>
are commanded to sing to the Lord a new song. So how does this biblical view impact Christians around the world? Three examples show us the importance of ethnomusicology for the spread of the gospel. First, we look to the Amazon Basin. Here, despite years of working with the Canela people, the Wycliffe Bible translators simply could not understand the Canela's music. Enter ethnomusicologist Tom Avery. Using his expertise, Avery discovered the structure behind the Canela music and composed several Christian songs in this style. They caught on like wildfire among the Canela because they were in a structure that the Canela understood. They joyfully sang these new praises. <laughs> now wait a minute. That was the hit music? Y you see, we wouldn't understand being forced to sing in the Canela style. And forcing the Canela to sing American music would be just the same because of the different structures behind the music. This music was in fact a major step towards the Canela's acceptance of the gospel. Second, in Chad, we find another principle of ethnomusicology at work. Because music is not universal, cultural understanding is important. Many believers among the Kara tribe in Chad believe that the Dumal drum, which looks something like this, is inappropriate for worshiping God because it has been used to worship spirits. Now, while there's nothing universally wrong with the Dumal drum, Christian leaders must be careful about using it in worship until the Christians in Chad understand that it, too, can be redeemed for God's glory. <clears throat> Third, in India, we find the importance of using cultural music in worship because of the principle of heart music. In India, singers like Sarozini Makala desire to worship the Lord in the music of their heart. This next piece shows Sarozini's emotional involvement. <laughs> Now, while it may sound strange to us, it is obvious from listening and from talking to her that she is singing to the Lord with all of her heart. And around the world, we see that Christians are using ethnomusicology to build cultural worship. And so, well, let's turn to our own culture. <laughs> well, this classic view of a homogenous American culture really doesn't represent the musical variety we are confronted with. With everything from church choirs <laughs> to hard rock. <laughs> so how does ethnomusicology apply here? Two applications stand out. The first is just as we have seen around the world, in America there is a great variety of heart music. Consider this example. Now, while it may seem like these artists are simply ruining their vocal cords, this Christian band showbread is actually saying the words, Did we not torture you, smiling as you died? Or is it that you killed death itself and now you are alive? Sharing the wonder of Jesus' resurrection with listeners who enjoy those discordant sounds. While everyone has their own heart music, it is important to understand others who are worshiping in a different heart music. The second application is to realize that music is a neutral medium, and there is no inherently immoral style of music. While music is often corrupted by immoral lyrics or bad images, we as Christians should redeem the culture when it is dominated by the secular media, such as the efforts of the Christian rapper Tebow, who seeks to redeem hip-hop for God's glory. Ethnomusicology opens our ears to the amazing musical experience around the world. Tribes of every size have a song in their hearts. In the increasingly homogenous global culture, with digital media exporting Western pop music around the globe, it is easy to lose sight of the musical variety that reverberates around our world. But ethnomusicology challenges us to listen beyond what we know. In Revelation 7, when the Bible says that every tribe and tongue will be represented in heaven, Perhaps it means that not just classical and jazz will be played up there, but every tribe will worship God in the music of their hearts and will raise their songs to the master composer who has inspired each one of them to sing and now composes his perfect symphony with every style 